Now we're going to talk about rational equations. So the difference in a rational expression and a rational equation is that the equation will have an equal sign. That's going to give us one extra little trick we can use to get rid of the fractions completely. When you were adding or subtracting, you had to find an LCD, you had to combine the fractions. When you do not have an equal sign, you have to do the math with the fractions. So if you're adding or subtracting, use your LCD to combine your fractions. If you're multiplying or dividing, you do not need an LCD. You just factor and then reduce. If you have an equal sign, that is the only time that you're able to just eliminate all the fractions. Now we can't just ignore half the problem. If we could, math would be a whole lot easier. So we can't just ignore the fractions, but in one to two steps, we can get rid of them and eliminate them. We're gonna find the LCD, we're gonna multiply it to all the numerators and let the fractions reduce away. That way they're dividing away. Again, if you do not have an equal sign, you cannot eliminate the fractions this way at all. You just have to work with them. On your test, you'll have some that you have to work with. We need to make sure you can understand more complicated concepts. That way when you get to your job, we, your boss knows that you can do things that are more difficult, whether you like them or not, you have the capability to do them. So the first thing we're gonna do here is we wanna get rid of the fractions. We have an equal sign, so we're allowed to get rid of the fractions. So we're gonna find an LCD. Again, the reason why this works is because what you do to one side, you must do to the other. I can multiply this LCD to the left and the right side of the equal sign, to every term on the left and every term on the right, and it will reduce the fractions because it's gonna to go to the numerators. So my LCD, the first thing I need to check is are my denominators factored? My first one's factored, x minus nine, there's no GCF, it's not the sum and difference of squares or the sum and difference of cubes. My second one's just x. One term, it's not a number, I can't break it up in any way, shape, or form. x squared minus 9x. Looking at this one, there's an x in both terms, so it has a GCF of x. If I take the x out, I have x squared divided by x, that's going to leave me one x left over. Negative 9x, be careful with your signs, divided by x will leave me a negative 9. Looking at the inside is two terms. It's not the difference of squares, it's not the sum of squares, it's not the difference of cubes, it's not the sum of cubes, so we cannot go any farther. Okay. So for your LCD, same thing as before when we were adding or subtracting. Take your first denominator, put it in parentheses if it's a binomial, x minus 9. Then we're looking and say we need an x, standalone all by itself x. X minus nine includes an X, but it's something extra. It's not just an X. This is like the deluxe model, and we need the standard model as well. So we're gonna multiply X as well. Then we need this denominator. It has both an X and an X minus nine in it. We already have the X, we already have the X minus nine. I don't need to add anything extra into it. My LCD should contain every single denominator. So my LCD has X minus nine, there. It has an X, there. And it should have the entire last denominator as well, which it is. So what we're gonna do with that is I'm gonna take my equation and I'm gonna multiply it to every single numerator. So I'm gonna have five times the LCD over x minus 9 plus 8 times the LCD over x equals, and you're doing the entire left side and the entire right side, negative 72 times x minus 9 times x all divided by x times x minus 9. Okay. What you do to one side, you do to the other. We multiplied this entire side 
and just distributed it to both. We multiplied this sign by it as well. Since this is not a fraction, but we could write it as a fraction by putting it over 1, that's why it only went to the numerators. Okay. They were going to reduce. We're going to look at the first fraction. 5 times x minus 9 times x, all divided by x minus 9. Is there anything that can reduce? Anything that's the same on both top and bottom? Would be your x minus 9s. Remember, you can reduce all of a factor or none of a factor. So I could not reduce just the x. I would have to reduce the entire piece, the entire set that is being added or subtracted together. Okay. Nothing's left on bottom. My 5 falls and my x falls. They're being multiplied together, so 5x. Plus sign falls. I have 8 times x minus 9 times x all divided by x. So I'm looking at this one fraction. Can anything reduce? Meaning is it the same thing on top as bottom? You could not reduce this x with that x because in the numerator this x minus 9, it's tied together. That is one factor. So I cannot split a factor up. But I do have an x over here all by itself. So I'm going to reduce the two x's, leaving me with 8 times x minus 9 equals over here negative 72 times x minus 9 times x all divided by x times x minus 9. The standard x's all by themselves they can reduce away and the x minus 9's can reduce and again the reason they're reducing is because anything divided by itself is 1. So when I reduce I'm essentially multiplying negative 72 by 1 which is still negative 72. Be extremely careful that that sign falls and you don't lose it anywhere. Okay. So what? One, two steps, fractions are all gone. It's a whole lot simpler looking than that was. So now all we're going to do is we're going to distribute to remove the parentheses, combine like terms, solve for x. So we have 8 times x and 8 times negative 9. 5x falls. 8 times x is 8x. Eight, 8 times negative 9 is negative 72 equals negative 72. Combine like terms. 5x plus 8x, that would be 13x minus 72 equals negative 72. Now I need to get the numbers to one side. I already have the x's alone. So if I had x's on both sides, I would move them to the same side. That's already taken care of. We don't have to worry about it. I'm going to move the 72 to the opposite side. So 72 is being subtracted from 13x. So I'm going to do the opposite. I'm going to add it to both sides. What you do to one side, you do to the other side. Negative 72 plus 72, well that's 0. Negative 72 plus 72, that also is 0. Make sure you don't lose your equal sign. You started with it, you must end with it. So I have 13x. I have to keep my equal sign. Negative 72 plus 72, that was 0. It's okay to have a 0. 0 is not an evil number. It's okay to be there. Then we need to solve for x. 13 is being multiplied to x. So undo the multiplication. We do the opposite, which is division. What you do to one side, you do to the other. Be very careful when it comes to zeros. You're allowed zero on top. You are not allowed zero in the denominator. So zero divided by 13, that is zero. X equals zero. Okay. You're not done yet. So don't think you're done and rush off. Your next step is to check. So we're going to check by taking our original problem, fractions and all, it's going to check that we got rid of them correctly. And we're going to see if this answer actually works. Because I don't know about y'all, but math isn't most people's strong suit. And if math is something you struggle with, then you want to make sure your answer is right before the teacher starts to grade it. So once the teacher starts to grade it, you lose all your points. But if you can do something to save your points, that's what we want to do. So I'm going to plug in, instead of everywhere I see an x, I'm going to put a 0. 0 minus 9 plus 8 over 0 
equals negative 72 over 0 squared minus 9 times 0. Okay. 0 minus 9, that's negative 9. So negative 5 ninths plus 8 divided by 0. Remember I said here you're allowed 0 on top, but you are not allowed 0 in the bottom. You're unsure which one it is, if it's supposed to be zero or if it's supposed to be undefined. Use your calculator. Double check. If you type zero divided by 13 into your calculator, it's going to tell you the answer zero. If you were to type eight divided by zero, it's going to give you an error message and say you divided by zero and that can't happen. It is undefined anytime you divide by zero. So this answer doesn't work. However, for my students, they're never allowed to tell me that their answer is a no solution just because the check didn't work. They need to have a justification. Because math is more than just about the numbers. Math is learning how to deal with situations in real life, not situations that always involve numbers. So you're at work, your boss gives you a task to do. You try it, you see if it worked, it didn't work, you go back to your boss and said it's impossible. Your boss is going to be like, why? Why is it impossible? So the same thing in math. When you get a no solution answer, we want to know why. Just because your check didn't work out, that could mean you made a mistake somewhere in your math. That doesn't necessarily mean it's a no solution. That just means your answer isn't correct. Not it's a no solution. No solutions, there's a reason for it to be no solution. Many times it is no solution because it violates the domain. So we need to look at the domain. So in your, anytime you're dealing with fractions, if there's variables in the bottom, you have to remember to check your domain. So your domain says that your denominators are never allowed to be zero. For the case in point, we're not allowed to divide by zero. So I'm going to take all of my denominators, my first denominator, my first denominator is x minus 9. So I'm going to take x minus 9 and say that cannot be zero. Because if x minus 9 is zero, then my answer is going to come out to be a no solution. But that doesn't tell me what x is. I still need to solve for x. So plus 9, plus 9, x cannot equal 9. Well, that's not a problem. We didn't get 9. So we're fine there. That's all good. Second denominator is just x. So that tells me that x cannot equal 0. x is already alone. I don't need to solve for it. So that's part of my domain. That's part of my domain. The last denominator has an x and an x minus 9, if you looked at the factored form. Our x and our x minus 9, we've already dealt with them. So if your answer comes out to 9 or 0, your no solution is because it violated the domain. If you always keep in mind you're not allowed to answer no solution unless you have justification, unless there's a reason for it and my check didn't work is not a good reason because that could mean you made an arithmetic mistake, an algebra mistake, something could have been wrong with the math. In this case, there wasn't. It was a domain issue. So no solution. Because the answer violates the domain. That is your answer. That is your justification as to why it is your answer. That way, it's not a guessing game. The problem with math is a lot of people get confused as to when do things not work? When are there no solutions? When are there solutions? Some people see it as a very ambiguous thing because sometimes things work and sometimes they don't. However, that's not the case. There's always justification for it. Most of the time it violates the domain. And if it violates the domain, then you have a no solution. So instead of just guessing, and if you get a problem that's really hard and just guessing no solution, that's not gonna help you out any. Make sure you always have some sort of a justification. So no solution because of the domain, your answer violated the domain. 
It did not work here because you cannot divide by zero. Your check should kind of show you that, oh, I can't divide by zero, that messed my domain up. So, any questions, comment, send me an email, whatever you need.